Greg, I'm obsessed with the concept of God. Is there a God? What is God like if there is a God? I trained as a scientist. I'm trying to put these two things together. Scientists talk to me. Philosophers talk to me. Theologians talk to me. As a mathematician, can you help me? Well, yes, I, I think so. I'll, I need help. Okay. <laughs> what, to, to me, I'll take the transcendent view of God. So, so here we are, human beings, in this messy world with wars, disease, uh, divorce, you name it. I don't want to go down the list very far. So, and so, is there something that transcends the merely human? For me, that's beauty. That's truth. That's, is there anything that can inspire a feeling of awe, admiration? I call all that God. And the, that's what I'm looking for in mathematics. I'm looking for beauty, for transcendence, for something that for a moment makes me forget that I'm a fallible, incredibly fallible, you know, human being with lots of problems, lots of flaws. I mean, you know, I can't even control my drinking, for example. But there's this moment of transcendence when I see a beautiful proof. The best is to find it yourself, of course. But even reading somebody else's beautiful proof, there's a moment where you feel illuminated. You feel in the presence of something much greater. Mm -hmm. You feel that there is something that totally transcends this mess that we create and make worse all the time because we're so stupid. Mm -hmm. so, so, so can we call that God, perhaps? Well, I, th I think what you're saying is that if there are such things as this absolute beauty that mathematical proofs that mathematics can give us, that... Or transcendent truths, for example. Okay, that that is indicative. Because if they're really transcendent, then we're not just uh, inventing something that we like. like. Like a painting can be beautiful and awe-inspiring because that affects our emotions. But mathematics, if when you find it, is something that's real and it, it, it really is transcendent because once you have it, it's real. It's not going to change if you've really proven it. That that is indicative of something beyond what we, what we see in, in, the, in the present world that's indicative of a, of a transcendent reality. Is that what you're saying? Call it what you will. Call it God or call it anything else. There's a transcendent reality that you're giving us Let a, me put a it glimpse this of. Let me put it this way. There are moments of illumination that happen when you're doing new mathematics, when you're doing mathematics. There are moments where you feel closer to God, where all of a sudden you feel you understand. You see the beauty. You see what's really going on. It's like being at the top of a mountain. I, I, I have a friend who, who's done mountaineering in Chile, where the mountains are spectacular. And he told me once he got to the top of a volcano covered with snow, the sky was incredibly blue, and he burst into tears. It was like being in the presence of, of God, to use a word which isn't very popular nowadays. Yeah. Now, if you want, take it as a metaphor. So call God the the fundamental nature of the cosmos, or call it the transcendent, or call it seeing something beyond us, something better, something more permanent, something more beautiful, or having a glimpse of the ultimate reality, or feeling that you have a glimpse of the ultimate reality, even if it's an illusion, for a moment. So what do you call that? That's like a religious experience. And those are the moments that make it all worthwhile. Because why suffer and, and work to understand something? Most of the time, you don't understand it. It's these moments, these, these moments that I think a spiritual person would say, you feel closer to God. That's one way to put it. I see a difference. But I, you can view it as a metaphor or you can view it literally. But I see a difference. How do you see I, it? I see a difference between your friend on the mountaintop who has a, a, a personal interaction with a, the a cosmos. sensory experience. With the cosmos? With, 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 with his sensory experience. Well, then you're making it introspective. And, and, I want to make it. Okay, but I think mathematics has a chance, and may not. But mathematics is the only thing that has a chance of transcending our own senses because you're dealing with something that's more fundamental. Robert, because Robert, I might not Robert, have reacted Robert, like Robert, human beings are such pathetic creatures. Any moment when a miserable worm like me feels illuminated or feels in the presence of something beautiful and transcendent, that's worth something because all we're good for is, is wars and, 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 and messing up our lives totally. I certainly have, you know. So the human race is totally messing up on everything. The only thing it does of value are these moments, in my opinion, of transcendence. 
a great work of art, a, a great piece of mathematics, a beautiful physical theory. This, for me, is, the rest is full of sound and fury signifying nothing, a tale told by a lunatic. It's these moments which show that human beings have achieved something and that maybe makes human beings worthy of surviving because otherwise, you know, global warming, I mean, another flood, who cares? Give the cockroaches or give mountain goats or give some other species a chance. You know, we clearly have wasted our opportunity of Except being Except for beauty. Except for beauty, yeah, I think so. <laughs>